So I'm here to represent Crocs and Ramsey with the Sharing Flemington Hub. The Hub is a large community centre consisting of social community-based program spaces and sporting facilities. There's also a rooftop garden terrace, community canteen and kitchen. It's a council-run facility that's intended to attract and encourage participation from local residents and vis visitors that are of diverse multicultural and multi-generational background. The project aspires to address social and environmental sustainability was being understated yet effective to garner community trust and engagement. The design embraces but challenges the typology of community centres. We sought to retain the physical and material language of such building types but also explored its form and its relationship to the surrounding structures. We wanted the hub to be considered by the local community, especially from the social housing, as a place of belonging that provides for social needs a workplace that's capable of being staffed by local residents and during hot or cold periods of the year, a refuge for the oldest social housing stock where they're unable to cope in them. Mm -hmm. A major sustainability choice was to undergo Green Star certification. The hub's located in Dadney Park and it's surrounded on three sides. There's social housing towers to the south, the city link of a pass along the east and private housing apartments to the north. It's part of a newly refurbished sporting area with uh, enhancements to the existing adjacent parklands. Whilst large, the hub is dwarfed by the surrounding towers and overpass. It was very important to consider how it was viewed from a high vantage point. We wanted to convey the hub as an extended living room and backyard to share the community at large. Such considerations included minimal roof clutter by concealing services inside. The site is unique and challenging. Soil conditions and remediation works were required. The external spaces enhances the communal backyard feeling. Sports field over has been redeveloped. There are new and upgraded sports courts and parklands. We look to include regeneration of the park's random vegetation with up to 40 new native trees, as well as numerous native vegetation plantings with more to come. In order to embrace the challenge of the typology, we sought to retain common parameters but push our building form away from the large flat roof construction typically found with community buildings. We looked at architectural theory for a universal shape that encouraged the local community to see our project as a place of belonging and shelter, regardless of one's cultural background. In order to be understated yet effective, our material language may seem simple, but great care was taken in its selection. Consider the way typical colour bond sheeting is used to express the triangular form of the roof, which is the entire upper level where it breaks down and forms a balcony wall. Structural block works economical, both in support and as a final finish. But a specific one had been chosen because it uses recycled crushed glass instead of sand, which is a finite resource. Coloured flecks of glass are decorative, but integral. Timber portal frames are expressed in its universal form and is visible both from the outside and inside. It's not decorative either, it provides a significant structural element of the project holding up the roof and providing the large internal span to the top floor. For Green Star, we undertook both design and as-built accreditation. Our commitment to environmental sustainability meant implementing many ESD principles. Using engineered timber framing alone educated us about the need for the built environment to reduce carbon emissions through more sustainable construction practices. The benefits of carbon sequestration resulting in a reduced reliance on just steel and concrete structures. The engineered timber supports the roof is the main upper level wall supports and is tied into the structural slab. The A-frame form is deceptive because it's adjusted to suit our internal spatial requirements. The concrete that we specified is a much greener alternative using significantly less Portland cement, reduced traditional aggregates and water was recycled or reused. Limiting steel structures to a more secondary role allowed us to use smaller steel member sizes throughout. Air tightness was an important consideration for efficient use of the mechanical heating and cooling energy recovery systems. Pushing the structural limits of the ground floor plan permitted a large central open lounge as the main focal entry point inside the hub. There are informal places to gather, allowing circulation off into two main directions. Food is an important cultural element. We have self-serve kitchenettes for bringing your own food or to make your own drink so that no specific group is disenfranchised from visiting. We wanted this central position uh, to be connected for flexible work, play and gathering. Larger groups can occur and council have plans to hold events within this lounge area. Further, there is a canteen on the ground floor and much larger fully fitted community kitchen above and a cafe is pictured here. It was an important element during our consultation to provide multiple options including using culinary plants grown on the roof terrace with education and cultural exchange front of mind. Some of the main special elements include gender neutral sporting facilities, a multi-faith prayer room with appropriate ablutions and other bathrooms, community consultation spaces, central reception at the heart, a ground floor recreation hall and family program rooms. 
The spaces are informal and configurable as needs changes. There is a large rooftop terrace garden which is served by the community kitchen. In the middle there is a central multi-level void with a bridging element allowing visitors to look down to the ground floor, further enhancing views of the portal from the inside. Our internal material palette is rich but simple whilst being environmentally aware. The triangular forms are further expressed throughout the spaces. The vantage points in the building are purposely made to highlight the surrounding towers that are nearby whether from inside or from the roof terrace. Further, community programs are catered along the left wing. The larger community kitchen is centrally located and for bigger events along the right hand side of the wing, we have provisions for a large community hall that can be subdivided into three separate spaces for maximum flexibility. Balconies to the northern face allows an additional outdoor connection, views of the sporting fields and its surrounds. It's also a shaded area. Again, rooms are configurable on a needs basis that develops and settles over time. The ceiling spaces structurally allowed us to carve out and extend beyond the flat plane, bringing in both natural light and acoustic control. Flexibility in the community halls can cater for events ranging from seminars, small theatre productions and even a dance studio with dedicated timber strip flooring. Finally, we want to highlight one more item from, from many. Uh, multiple layers of richness have been considered for social sustainability. Council has engaged an artist from an early period during the design and consultation phases. Part of this was for an artist to work with the local community and with the building's design. Through much consultation, a decorative collage was developed exploring the stories of local community members such as indigenous elders and migrant groups. It became a part of the building. A pig perforated metal system was used to provide a subtle imagery that invites users to identify visual elements contained without being too overt and still to perform as a screening material. With such elements, community legacy with the project can be further strengthened. This is my last slide. So I'm thank you very much for being able to share this project with you all. And it's a social significant one for the local community with the social needs.